And it's like a lot of the stories I've told. The story is, like all stories, kind of made up. But it contains some of the greatest truths the world will ever know inside the story. So I want you to listen to the story of shepherding. All right? Not much older than some of you. A little boy who was there that first Christmas night. You know, your songs were pretty. In fact, you sang well. I used to sing songs like that when I was with my father out in the fields watching over our flocks near Bethlehem. And the story I'm going to tell you, some people don't believe. But I'm going to tell you right now, it really happened. It happened just the way I'm going to tell you, though I didn't understand then why it had to happen that way and what it all meant. The night was like almost every other night. I was with my father out in the fields near our campfire. The sheep were bedding down, and it was late at night, and then the miracle happened. But before I tell you about all that, I need to tell you about my father. My father was a great man. He was probably the greatest shepherd in all of Israel. He was a courageous man. He was never scared of anything. Matter of fact, shepherds used to come from all over the area to ask my father advice about the flocks. There was nothing my father didn't know about sheep or about how to get sheep out of problems. Or when he found himself in a situation, he always knew exactly what to do for himself and the sheep. One time, I was with my father out in the field. There were other shepherds around. And a bear came out of the woods to attack our lambs. The other shepherds were throwing stones at the, at the bear, but it didn't care. They were waving their staffs, and the bear just kept coming, kept chasing the lambs. And my father climbed up on a big rock, and he took his staff and held it high in his hand, and he began to scream loudly. I thought he had lost his mind. But you know what happened? When the bear saw him screaming up on top of the rock, waving his staff in the air, the bear ran away without taking a single one of our lambs. When he got down off the rock and we were sitting down together, he started to explain to me why the bear ran away, but I didn't listen. All I knew was my dad had scared away a hungry bear when no one else could. My dad was a brave man. That's what made this night that I'm telling you about so amazing. Is it scared you? See, it was a night like almost any other night. It was late into the night, and the stars were shining in the sky, and the cool air was kind of wrapping around me while we sat by the campfire. And you know what it's like to be up late at night? Your eyes get heavy, and your head begins to bob. I wanted to stay awake, but all the sheep were already bedded down, and my father was tending the fire. So I guess I must have dozed off. All I remember is I was awoken by a, a bright light, and I thought I slept through the night all night long, and there was the sun coming up. But as soon as I opened my eyes and got them focused, I realized it wasn't the sun. The light was coming from right above us, from the being that was hovering right there in the sky. I was scared. I was frightened. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to run away. But I couldn't. I thought... My dad. My dad would know exactly what to do to take care of this. And I looked around to find my father. And when I finally spotted him, I saw the look on his face. He was scared. I'd never seen my father scared before. He stared up at the, this being in the sky. And I could see it in his face. He didn't know what to do. I later found out it was an angel. When the angel spoke, I felt something on the inside. All of a sudden, I wasn't scared anymore. And the first thing the angel said was, fear not. And it's amazing how quickly everything on the inside of me changed. All of a sudden, I wasn't scared anymore. And the angel said, I bring you good tidings of great joy for the whole world. There is born to you in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And you'll find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. 
And just as he finished saying that, I want to tell you that all the stars in the sky disappeared because they were replaced by so many angels. Hundreds, thousands of angels filling the sky, singing. And their song warmed my heart. Glory to God in the highest. I'll never, ever forget that light that shone. I still see it in my dreams. Or the song they sang. I still hear it ringing in my ears. It doesn't matter how long I live. I hope I never forget that very first Christmas night. Well, the angels left. They went back up into heaven. And I was looking up at the sky at all the stars that had seemingly just reappeared. And I heard my father speak to me. What are you doing? Hurry up. We have to go. Go where? We have to go to Bethlehem and find the baby that the angels told us about. My father was grabbing me by my shoulder and pulling me on. We had to go. We started walking toward Bethlehem and I said, Daddy, shouldn't someone stay with the sheep? I said, God will take care of the lambs, my son. We must go and find the Messiah. Bethlehem wasn't that far away, but it seemed like it took us so long to get there. It was late at night. It was dark. Just the moon and the stars guiding us over the hills. And finally we could see the village of Bethlehem out there in front of us. But above the little village was a star. Brighter than any star I'd ever seen. And it was shining its light right down on Bethlehem. But it seemed like it was shining it on the far side of the village. We made our way to the edge of the village and everyone was asleep. We quietly went through the streets so we didn't wake anybody up. When we got to the other side, there was a stable and we could see a light burning in it. And some men outside whispered to me. My dad looked at me and said, this must be the place. We quietly walked up to the men who were standing there and I my father seemed nervous, which is something I've never seen my father. I've never seen him scared and never been nervous about anything. But he said, is this the place? The place God told us about? The men who were standing outside looked at each other rather puzzled. And they said, yes, this is the place. And they opened the door to the stable. I looked inside and I saw, I saw a young girl lying on the hay next to a manger and a little baby. And there was a man kneeling beside the manger who was looking, just staring at the baby. The woman looked so peaceful and when she looked, she smiled at We went in and the man stood up from the manger and he said, my daddy said, we've come to see the baby the angels told us about. The man told my father, my name is Joseph, and this is my wife Mary, and she gave birth just a few hours ago. But what's this about angels? And all of a sudden, the expression on my father's face changed. He got filled with joy and excitement as he began to tell Joseph about the angels that appeared in the sky and, and the singing, glory to God in the highest. He was so excited, he was telling Joseph, and Joseph was listening, and I could see the smile on Mary's, Mary's face. She knew it. God was doing something great. They were still talking, and I was standing behind my father. I didn't know what to do. And I looked over at Mary, and you know what she did? Mary said, Come here. She whispered, Come here. I walked around with my father and went over to her and bent down to see what she wanted to say to me. And you know what she said to me? Would you like to hold baby Jesus? I couldn't believe it. She reached into the manger and picked him up and placed him in my arms. And I held him close to my chest. He was so tiny. Like the little baby lambs we had in our flock. So helpless and gentle. And yet I knew he would grow up to be a big, strong man. But as I held him there in my arms, he wrapped his little hand around my head. And opened his eyes. And I looked into his eyes. And you know what I saw? He loved me. And you know what? 
I loved him. I held him as long as I could, and I heard my father say, it's time to go. And I had to get baby Jesus back to Mary. My dad told Joseph and Mary goodbye, and we made our way out to the stable. It was early in the morning. The sun was almost about to come up, and all the people in the village of Bethlehem were getting up and starting to come outside. And then my father did something I never would have imagined. He walked up to complete strangers and began to tell them how the angels had appeared in the sky and how Jesus the Messiah was born, how God had kept his promises. He told every person we saw, by the time we got to the other side of the village, he must have told dozens of people. And then we walked quietly back to our flock. When we got there, I found out my father was right. All the sheep were just fine. God had taken care of them. I went to check on all the baby lambs. And when I got back, my father was tending the fire and fixing breakfast, although I really wasn't hungry. And he was humming a song, not like, not like the songs you just sang. One of the songs we would sing in the temple at celebration times. And I asked him what it meant. He told me, sit down, son. And I sat down and he began to tell me about the stories. The old, old stories about God's promises and the coming of the Messiah and the Savior who would be born to save us from our sins. And then he looked at me and said, Son, baby Jesus is the Messiah who will save us from our sins. I couldn't believe it. Now it made sense. I had held baby Jesus in my arms. But he's the one who would carry me in his arms as my Savior. Well, that was many, many years ago. And I'm an old man now. I don't have any more years on this earth. And you know what? That's okay. Because God has helped me to see and understand how special all of us are to him. That he would send Jesus to be our Savior. It was a long time before I saw Jesus again. My father had already gone to heaven. And I now had sons. And I would take my sons and we would take our flock to Jerusalem every year castle to sell the lambs. And one year, we made our way up toward Jerusalem from Bethlehem. And as we got near the city, you know what I saw? <coughs> Hundreds of people gathered around a man riding on a donkey. You know what they're saying? Hosanna. They were singing. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the King of Kings. And when I saw the man, I turned to my son and said, Boys, look, that's Jesus. The Jesus I told you the angels sang about years ago. And I thought to myself, He really is going to be King of all of God's people. Well, we sold our lambs and went back to our people. A few days later, it was time for us to go and celebrate Passover. So he chose a lamb, this very special, pure lamb. And we led it into Jerusalem so we could go to the temple and celebrate Passover as a family. But as I walked with my children through the streets of Jerusalem, I heard some horrible noises. All of a sudden, I saw them coming. A crowd of people yelling and screaming. And they were out front were a bunch of Roman soldiers marching. And they were leading a man who was carrying a cross. I turned my boys around and tried to get them out because I didn't want them to see such a horrible thing during the Passover celebration. But the crowds were so heavy and thick that we couldn't get through and we were stuck. And they kept coming closer and closer and closer. The soldiers were pushing everybody back into the crowds in a big way. And right as the man who was bearing the cross got almost even with me, stumbled and fell. The cross came down really, really hard on his back. I heard him cry out. I was trying to shield the eyes of my sons. I didn't want them to see such a horrible thing. When the soldier grabbed my arm and said, You! Carry his cross! I was scared. I didn't know what to do. I reached down and picked up the cross and on my shoulder and the man who was laying on the ground stood up and when he stood up he looked at me right in the eyes and he 
a song? The very same eyes that stared into me when he was just a baby. It was Jesus. And his eyes were still filled with love, but also pain. The soldier said, March. So I drugged that heavy cross up the hill. When we got up to the top, I, I laid the cross down. The soldier pushed me and said, Leave. As I walked away, I heard Jesus crying. They were hurting him. I don't want to talk about that anymore. What I want to tell you is what happened next. Some women came and said that they saw angels. A lot of men said they didn't believe it, but you know what? I believed it because I'd seen angels before. That night, long ago, in the fields of Sabetha, I knew angels were real. The angels had said that Jesus was alive. And now it made sense. He really was born as a baby. So he could grow up to be our Savior. To save us all from our sin. Well, like I told you, I'm an old man. I still watch sheep out the fields with my sons and with their sons, my grandchildren. And from time to time, other shepherds come and seek me out now like did my father. But not because they want to know about how to take care of their flocks. They want to hear the story about the angels long ago. About the light shining from heaven. And the songs they sing. And I love to tell them about what God has done. About how Jesus is the Savior. And you know what I heard? I heard that Jesus is still doing for people exactly what he did for you. Because Jesus, when he looks into our, into our eyes, and when he loves us, does for people today what he did for me when I held him in my arms so long ago. He took away all my fear. He took away all my worry. And he gave me love and joy and peace. Jesus still does that. You know why? Because he is the shepherd of hearts. The shepherd that heals our hearts and gives us life. So remember on this Christmas Eve, as you gather with your family and friends, Remember the story of the shepherds, how they saw the light from heaven and heard the angels sing, how they proclaimed, for unto you a Savior is born. He is Christ the Lord. <laughs>